Hey guys, this is CEO speaking again. Today it's time to deal with our fan wiring. Right before we take care of our fan, let's transfer the power supply voltage over the terminal block right here in the middle of the trainer, okay? I prepared some wires in advance to save uh, your watching time. And uh, in order to watch it, I'm going to temporarily remove the fan. I'm gonna put it right here. Okay. So, do you see the wiring diagram right here in front of me? I use it not only for the terminal block and the fan, but also later on for the DC motor in the next video, okay? You can surely download a copy of this uh, uh, wiring if you go in the video description, so you're gonna find the link, okay? Now, you are going to respect the wiring exactly as is, and after you give it a visual checking, you can also try to quickly measure it. So we're going to shortly put the power on for our trainer. So we're going to plug the cord like this. You can see the uh, LED popping up saying that the power supply is at work. You touch with the black of the meter any blue wire and you touch with the red of the meter any red wire. So watch the multimeter, it says clearly about 12 volt, okay? So the voltage was transferred right here. If I pick up another one, another red wire and another blue wire, the power supply voltage from the supply is transferred right here on the terminal block, okay? Now, let's uh, uh, remove the power supply cord. Please remember, don't ever make connections with the power supply on because the safety comes first, okay? Okay then, if you go back uh, on the last quarter of the uh, video number 13, we certainly checked uh, uh, our, uh, our fan. So the fan is completely functional, okay? Short reminder, the computer fans like this one are actually driven by a bunch of transistors because they are brushless fans. They have brushless motors inside. So they are driven by a bunch of transistors hidden somewhere behind the label you see right here, okay? So to make sure everybody understands, uh, here is a broken fan. So I open this one for you. We remove the label from here, okay? And uh, we also remove the propeller, comes out. The magnet is all around the propeller here inside, okay? And now, we want to watch. These are the windings of the two phases for the brushless fan, okay? However, because you can't see this right, I'm going to cut the plastic supports, okay? So then you'll be able to see it properly like that. So we remove it from here. We leave it aside. Okay. So if you take a look right here underneath the windings, there is some circuitry. Oh, take a look at this guy. You see this guy right here? Actually this uh, brushless motor is not driven uh, by a, a bunch of uh, little transistors. That's a full integrated circuit. Uh, it's called FS276, this one right here. So it does not only contain the uh, whole effect sensor, but also the driver, surely made of transistors, uh, to create the two phases necessary for the uh, brushless fan, okay? so. Because of this, the transistors and the integrated circuits, they are very sensitive to the DC current flow direction. We have to respect the wire polarity. Like you see here, the red wire is for the positive and the black one is for the negative. 
okay? So we have to respect that polarity. Now, if we return back to our fan, this one, we're going to notice that there are two wires coming out of it, you see? Two wires coming out of it, but unfortunately, the polarity is not obvious because none of these wires are wearing different colors. Both of them are black, okay? And even if, if you take a close look right here on the second wire, you see a kind of thing which is the minus, which is right. I'm going to use a little trick for you. So for everybody to be right about doing the wiring, okay? So for that purpose, I prepared here again a uh, connector taken from an old uh, computer power supply. So you see the uh, red and the close is black to it. These are representing the five volts and the yellow and the other black are representing the 12 volts, okay? We don't need the five volts. So let's say we remove them as I did on this one here. And I only remain with two wires, a black and the yellow. When I'm going to plug this one right here on the fan connector, guess what? They're going to match because this is a uh, computer fan, okay? So, because they match, now we're going to do the wiring. Right here on the terminal block, I've made the uh, notation, F is for the fan. So, I'm going to pick up the yellow, which is representing the positive 12, okay? And uh, by uh, uh, using this one here, I'm going to connect it on the terminal block. So the fan is gonna be able to catch a positive 12 from here, okay? As the black is going to go on the interface, on the pin number 11, which is the third one from my right, okay? So, we're going to plug it here. Remember that uh, the interface, the interface has two rows of terminals. The odd numbers are in the bottom and the even numbers are in the top. Number 11 is the third one from that direction here, from my right, okay? So this is the pin number 11. This would be the command coming from the PLC to the fan, okay? So we've got it connected. We've got the other one. And now we're going to be ready to simulate that uh, the fan is receiving a command from the PLC. We put on one more time the power supply. As you can see, the fan is not turning because now it's not receiving any commands, okay? Which is absolutely obvious, okay? However, in the moment we want the fan to receive a command, we just need to use an extra wire, okay? Like this one. And uh, by having an extra wire, we're going to put one end of the wire anywhere I can find a blue representing a negative. And I'm going to place the other end of the wire on the black uh, on the interface as you can see the fan starts turning okay so anytime i'm touching this pin 11 is like the fan is receiving a command from the plc to turn see so it's turning on anytime i'm touching this okay so that's how we can check it don't forget we put the power supply off and then we're going to catch all these wires together like this. It's a maze of wire right now. And uh, we're going to try to hide these wires underneath the fan because otherwise they're going to take too much room. It's going to look just ugly. Okay. So right here, we use a little tie wrap to do it. And then we can replace the fan over its original position, okay, right here. So by placing the fan in the original position, we can surely 
use our screws one by one and uh, we're going to place them back okay one by one on the original position right here carefully okay so one by one you also remember that we checked in the video 13 that uh, the fan has to respect a certain uh, position because we want the airflow to go out of our trainer so i can give it one more check if you want to okay we pick up the wire now the fan being in place i catch any uh, negative of the supply pin 11 you see the fan goes on and the led is mounted on it they say the fan is turning okay put the power supply off okay so that's how we check our fan working okay we finished with our fan everything looks fine guess what in the next video we are going to deal with the whole bunch of relays here is going to be a bit more complicated is the most technical part of building our trainer because we have here the uh, big connector or socket for the 8-pin relay and we have the two additional relays right here and they are going to control the DC motor. Until then, you have to take care. See you for the next video. Bye-bye.